Hey friends, welcome back to another Seed Talk podcast episode with Lisa and Lane. And friends, you are in for a treat today. If you're on YouTube, you can already see what the treat is all about, right? So today, Lane and I are going to be talking about great gardener gifts. And no friends, not all of these gifts come from the gardener's workshop. We are truly sharing our favorite gardening stuff, even beyond, you know, because the gardener's workshop basically is built on what is our favorites, but there are some that we just don't sell that we can't sell for whatever reason. And we're even sharing some of those today. So if you're new here, welcome aboard. Um, This is a product of the gardenersworkshop.com. And I am just really pleased to be joined by Lane, who is our seed manager here at the Gardener's Workshop. Hi, Lane. Hi. Hello, everybody. So this podcast, as you may or may not know, is the brainchild of Lane, who she is the one that fields all the questions from our customers about our seeds. And that's kind of what we talk about a lot of times. But today is different. What are we talking about today? I've I've given the hint away, but you can go a little (laughs) deeper. Yes. So today, so if you're watching us over on YouTube, you can already see that Lisa is wearing a Santa hat and I am wearing antlers. So we obviously have holidays on the mind, right, Lisa? Yes. And I'm going to deploy my hat in case y'all can hear it or not. Oh, yes. Deploy the hat. Maybe not. (laughs) It's a tricky hat. It's a tricky hat. Oh, there it goes. We wish you a Merry Christmas. And a happy do. <laughs> oh my goodness. I love that hat. Oh, it, it is go. It is pretty cute. All right, here we go. It's very cute. So we are going to be talking about great gift ideas for gardeners or farmers. And the great thing about this is that even though we are obviously thinking of the holidays, gardening gifts are great any time of year and for any reason. So Lisa's going to pick a gift. I'm going to pick a gift. We're just going to alternate and go through some of our very favorite things. So we're going to get started here. As usual with Seed Talk, you can join us over on YouTube if you'd like to see Lisa in a Santa hat and me in some antlers. All right, Lisa. So the very first gift pick is yours. Why don't you go ahead? Oh, there you go. Yep. So I'm telling you, these are the best gloves ever. Um, I've worn them for about 15 years and they are Atlas Nitrile Touch gloves. And friends, I will tell you that I give my sisters and sister-in-laws new gloves every single year because who doesn't want a fresh pair of gloves Um, and they are super affordable and you'll find them at the gardener's workshop from small to extra large and let me tell you why I love them I literally can sow seeds in these gloves and if you could hear that they are super grippy And that means that you can just do any little job. I have cousins that milk cows in them. I know that golfers wear them, quilters wear them, mini maids, um, merry maids, not mini maids, merry (laughs) maids. Um, A lot of people use them in a lot of different places. And who would not appreciate a pair of gloves, new ones, fresh ones? right? There's nothing better than a fresh pair of gloves. And also they're great for opening jars too. If you want to just keep an extra pair in your kitchen. And you know what I wanted to mention? Um, they also come in extra small. You probably wear an extra small, don't you? Yes. Yes, And, um, that was kind of our specialty size for all these years. Cause there are so many people with small hands that are wearing big gloves everywhere. They're machine washable um, and you can get them in four packs or you can get them individually. And friends, it is a gift that your friends will expect them every single year from you. Yes, fantastic idea. And yes. gloves make an excellent stocking stuffer. Exactly, for all, sure. All right, so let's go on to my first pick. So Lisa's first pick was really great. As a stocking stuffer, like we just said, mine would not be a great stocking stuffer gift unless you were shopping for the Jolly Green Giant, perhaps. (laughs) So my first pick is leaf hands. 
So I've that's what I like. To call- yes. So I call these leaf hands. I think the technical name might be leaf scoops, but yeah. these are just, if you're listening on a podcast, I'll try to describe them and I'll hold them up here for you. But they basically look like really oversized dust pans almost, but they have a handle where you put your hand in and it just acts as a hand extension. It gives you so much surface area so you can maneuver huge quantities of leaves very quickly. So in our garden, we don't let any leaves leave the property. Basically, we do relocate leaves though. So sometimes my husband or I, one of us will rake the leaves into a pile and the other one will take the leaf hands and distribute them into the garden beds. They're also great if you're feeding things into a leaf mulcher, or maybe you are someone that does bag your leaves or puts them into a bin. These make the job so much faster. You have to bend down less times and you also bend down not quite as far. So it just makes everything go faster. It's also great if you're weeding and you have a big pile of weeds there, you can maneuver grass clippings. They, the only tip I have is that sometimes because they're plastic or at least mine are, where the wrist hits, the wrist strap hits your wrist, it's good if you have a long sleeve shirt that kind of pads you right there if you're going to be doing it for a long period of time. But these just let you move really large quantities of leaves really quickly. And we absolutely love our leaf hands. Have you ever used these, Lisa? We used to sell those, Lane. We had oh, them. Did? Oh, we, we did, but then we lost our supply. And you're reminding me that we should revisit that. We love yes. those things. They were a great gift, particularly, particularly when people are looking for stuff for the dad, you know, it's like the dad is stuck with that job. Why not give him something that can really help him out a pair of gloves. And those were were how we kind of bundled it back in the day. What a great idea. I love those. And I do have a pair. Oh, good. Yeah. I love them. And I just love giving something unexpected and kind of like, what is that? Everyone gets interested when they open it up. So that was my first pick. So now let's move on to Lisa's next pick. And that is going to be, of uh, course, of course, describe so what it is. This is the cut flower shears that we use here on our farm. Um, I used to be a Felco number two shear user for years and years. That's what I used. And I loved them but they're a little big and they're a little bit heavy. These little shears fit in your hands so beautifully and really hold up. Um, And in fact, we know that they last more than a year because we don't lose them because we use a pouch. This literally y'all is my original pouch when I started flower farming 20 some years ago, literally. And why I love it is it's got a clip on it that slides on your pocket. You do not have to wear a belt to use it. And when you have a pouch on your pocket, you never lay your clippers down. And that's why we know that these clippers last more than a season because we don't lose them. We have the biggest pile in there. So this is a great gift. The pouch, in fact, um, any clipper will fit in it. Um, But this is super lightweight and handy. And my mother-in-law actually one Christmas bought from us the clippers for all of her daughters and daughter-in-laws. Um, and they all keep them in their kitchen, you t- in their um, s- their little junk drawer. You know what I mean? To, to do flowers in their kitchen, oh, yeah. to cut that kind of stuff. So totally in love with our shears and the pouch. And it's a great gift that they will love you for. Everyone needs shears. There's always reasons to have multiple different shears throughout your house, throughout your garden love the shears. And I have to say at our company picnic last year, there's always like a game and prizes. And my husband and I were like crossing our fingers that the shears were still there when it was time for us to pick our prize. And they were, so we oh, love awesome. those shears. Very nice. Awesome. Yes. <laughs> All right. On to the next pick. So my next pick is something that is quite tiny, but it is one of my favorite tools ever. And that is a mini oh. trowel. So I'm going to hold a half plant trowel. Yes. Yes. I'll show you the scale. Let me bring it up. So it's this tiny for those that are just listening on a podcast. It almost looks like if a squirrel were a farmer, this would be their full size. (laughs) trowel. (laughs) That's like the size of it. It's like probably six or seven inches long. It's only about an inch wide. And what I love to use this trowel for, well, there are a few things, but I love 
planting soil blocks with this trowel. So we plant a lot of stuff. We have a wooded lot and a lot of our soil is quite hard and it's not easy. I can't just do a one-handed putting the soil block into the soil. This little shovel just creates the perfect little notch for you to just drop a three quarter inch soil block in. My husband even uses it. They're perfect for him as well. And they're also great for if you're someone that has a lot of house plants, or if you're giving it to someone that has a lot of house plants, just shoveling a tiny bit of soil in, you can use it to get transplants out of plug trays or out of really small nursery pots. I just absolutely love this. And I would not be without this, especially for planting my soil blocks out into the garden. And it's so cute. It's so cute. It's just very yeah. cute. Very, very cute. I love that. I love it. Yeah. I may have, to have one. You do need to have one. Everybody needs to have one of those. All right. Next gift. All right, Lisa. About the same size. This is our Japanese sod cutter. And while this may have been designed to, you know, think about sod farmers, that would be a farm with just fields and fields of grass growing. And they literally go out and they use a machine, I'm sure, to cut it into strips. Well, this is the tool they use when they're installing it in somebody's lawn and just allows them to cut it. Um, it has a serrated edge. And I mean, we use this tool for so many different uses here on our farm from harvesting greens, like cutting lettuce and kales. And I do not use them for cutting flowers, um, but it works absolutely great for cutting fleshy things like leaf. Um, and also, what else do I use it for? Oh my goodness, for cutting the string off of our tiller that gets caught up on the tiller on the tractor. I mean, it is so, Steve and I have used it to cut through um, cover crop crops that have gotten wrapped around the tiller. I mean, I just can't tell you how tough this little knife is. And it's super affordable. It is a perfect stocking stuffer. And here's the testament that you can even leave it laying outside and letting it get all rusty and it still cuts. I've done it. I have found them out in the garden where somebody dropped one and it's like, oh my gosh, it still works like a gym. So we totally love the sod cutter. I love that. And can you describe the difference between the sod cutter and a hori hori for someone that's maybe listening instead of watching sure. us? So a hori hori is a garden knife. It is super heavy duty. Um, I mean, it's got a really nice wooden handle and a um, galvanized or a, a, some a ductile iron type of um, blade on it. I mean, it's pretty heavy in your hand. You're not going to bend it. This is much lighter weight and it's actually the cutting edge that does all the work on this. Um, the garden knife is great for stabbing in the ground to plant a transplant or something um, and to pry up something out of the ground. Um, the sod knife is for more for cutting action, not getting something out of the way that you don't want there. Yeah, the hori hori is really good for digging and this is yeah. better yeah. for cutting. And we love that all thing. Right. Yep. Love that one. All right. Let's go to the next one. My pick. All right. So I am a big book lover. So my next idea is to come up with some sort of bundle of books that is themed to something your gift recipient likes and throw yes. in a few packs of seeds. So the books that I picked, I was imagining if I was putting together a set for someone that is into vegetable gardening and maybe flower growing. So the first book I have obviously has to be Lisa's Vegetables Love Flowers. So this is a fantastic book that is all about, I should probably let Lisa describe what it's all about, but it's about why it's so beneficial to your vegetables to actually grow flowers. And it's also about a three season cutting garden. So do you want to say any more about this? Lisa? Yes, that's good. Good job on that. <laughs> okay. And then the next book I picked is Joe Gardner's new book, which is the vegetable gardening book, which is all about growing vegetables. And it, it takes you through all the steps, but my favorite section is actually the grow guide section where he goes crop by crop and kind of lists out exactly how to start these different things, different tips and tricks, and also his favorite varieties. So I love that. And then of course, we got to throw in a bug book. So I picked one of Jessica Wallace's books here, Attracting Beneficial Bugs to Your Garden, which is all about who the beneficial insects are and how you can kind of lure them in and create a habitat for them in your garden. So between these three books, you've got flowers covered, you've got vegetables covered, and then you've got 
bugs covered. And then you could, of course, pick a few packs of seeds of your choice, some of your favorite varieties of flowers or vegetables, and just throw those in as well. And that is a really cute bundle and something that will keep people interested all winter long, just looking through these wonderful books. <laughs> That is such a, such a great gift. And, you know, we've got podcasts with both of those authors over on the field and garden. We had Jessica Walliser on talking about her book and also Joe Lample um, on his book. And so you can maybe, maybe Lane will put the links to those in the show notes for you. Yes. Yes, of course. You can't go wrong with getting people books. All right. Oh, Lisa's next pick. Oh my goodness. So y'all, we are so happy that we have um, brought these back. These are the, the brand box gloves, gauntlet gloves. And this is the glove that you wear when you have to go into the brambles and the part of your yard where there's maybe pokey sticks and thorns and um, super nice feeling. I mean, when you, the first time I slid my hand into these, uh, this is a new pair. We have an old pair that we've had here for years. So these are kind of like, you know how when you put that brand new pair of blue jeans on and they're crisp and they haven't been in the washing machine yet? That's exactly what these feel like. This is a pair of gloves that if you have somebody that needs protection from whatever it is in the garden, this is just a super great glove. And these are available from small to extra large for men and women. They're unisex and they fall right below my elbow. And I really love that because I can put them under a coat and wear a jacket and really feel protected with them. Um, they are machine washable, but I try to prolong washing them because it kind of makes them just a little bit, I like the crispness of these. So this is really for rose bushes, but we have a lot of blackberry brambles here on the farm and they are vicious. I mean, they yeah. are really vicious. Um, so this is a great one and um, it would be a perfect stocking stuffer because they're long and skinny. Love, yes. totally love them. And the thing that was so striking about those when I saw them the first time, they are beautiful. They yeah. look like fashion gloves. They are just so pretty. Like that is such an amazing gift to open. I would just love it if someone would give me those. You know, and the founder of Fox Glove is a good friend of ours, Harriet. And um, she was a la is a landscape architect that could not find gloves. And that sent her down this path to start designing and manufacturing the gloves that that we want, right? And um, these were one of the early on types and um, we're just really honored and glad to be able to offer her gloves again. Yeah, those are beautiful. Okay, next pick. It's my pick and it is a kneeling pad. Mm. I love kneeling pads. My husband and I have multiple kneeling pads and you can always use more. So a kneeling pad is basically a super cushy pad that helps protect your knees. So we use these anytime we're outside. If you're going to be down on the ground, if you're transplanting seedlings or wow. even shrubs or perennials, if you're weeding, anytime you're going to be on the ground, rather than straining your legs and your back by squatting or crouching, put down a kneeling pad. You can go down on your knees. It protects your knees. It keeps them dry. And it also distributes your weight so that you're not crushing and compressing the soil under the weight of your knees. And the other thing is we also keep these indoors. So if you are going to be painting baseboards, if you're going to be reorganizing a kitchen cabinet and you're going to be on the ground, or even if you're going to be washing a dog or a baby in a bathtub, these really can save your knees. We love our kneeling pads and we would not want to be without them. And the thicker, the better. And, you know, Stevie uses um, the one that we have is so thick that. Oh, yeah. Steve now Steve now uses it in his garage when he's working on his tractor or his Harley or his whatever. Um, so, yeah, you're right. We need to think beyond the garden with our kneeling pads for sure. Oh, yeah. Yes. And like I said, we have outdoor ones and we have indoor ones and you can never have too many kneeling pads. And that's something that every gardener especially needs. Yes, agreed. Next gift. And this is kind of a big one physically, Lisa. It is and my cart. Yes. So 
this picture was from, oh my goodness, that was before we even bought the land next to us. So this picture is probably 15 years old. And that is one of my favorite garden carts. And it's, the brand is the Vermont Garden Cart. And um, as you can see, six, but that's six buckets of flowers that are in there. And I mean, we just use it for everything here on our farm and you should never leave it sitting outside. We try to keep them indoors. Um, but I mean, there's just always, I mean, from taking in groceries for what, I mean, there's just so many different uses. Bobo uses it to take flats of plants out to the garden. Um, totally and completely love that cart. Yes, it's so pretty. And even thinking of a holiday gift, you could just wheel that cart right under the Christmas tree and put a bow on it and stack gifts in that. How pretty would that be? And how it, happy would you be to receive that? And, you know, the tailgate on the back does lift out so you can even carry longer stuff in it. Um, so and I actually have a larger one, too. But the, that small, the one that I'm pulling there that six buckets fit is really the most you um universal it fits through doorways easily and all that kind of stuff totally love that got that cart yes okay let's go to my last gift lisa has one more after this but mine is going to be a potting tray yep. so i'm debating i have it next to me here but i'm not sure if i should try to hold it up because it's quite large <laughs> But I love this potting tray. This is where I mix my soil for soil blocks. It provides this nice, large, flat surface so you can really fill up your soil blockers. And also, if you do anything with house plants or even transplants, I have an indoor version of this and an outdoor, like I have with a lot of things that I've mentioned today. But you can pot house plants in this. I was just repotting some amaryllis bulbs in this, and it just keeps all the surfaces on your table dry free of soil. It's just amazing. I used to use like a really big bowl to try to do my fill my soil blockers and it just didn't have that flat surface that you really need to be able to get into every nook and cranny. And you can also use a kitty litter box for this purpose if you wanted. But the thing I like about a potting tray is it typically has one really low side, which makes it easier to reach into without having to strain. And my other idea with this of course, if it's someone that you want to get into soil blocking or they're interested in soil blocking, throw in some blockers. But even if they're already a soil blocker, how happy would you be if someone went the extra mile and made you some blocking mix? Oh, good idea. <laughs> yes. How cute would that be? And you know that song, Santa Claus is coming to town and it's he's making a list and checking it twice. Well, you <laughs> could put a little note that says, I made you some mix and sifted it twice. <laughs> How cute <laughs> is that? And you know, How that, cute. that's the same tray that I use. Did you know that? Oh, no, I did not. We I'll actually used to sell that tray. Yes. And what that tray does for you is it allows you to any flat surface becomes a potting bench because it keeps yep. everything contained. I mean, I'm a neat soil blocker. I use, I mean, you can soil block in your living room in this thing if you wanted to. So that's a great, yeah. tip. that's a great idea. Yeah. And when it's a dedicated potting tray like this, I just leave. That's why you can see in the picture, this is just my extra soil scraps in there from the last time I was blocking, but I just leave the soil in there to dry out and then it's ready to go the next time. All Perfect. right. So Lisa has one more pick that is a surprise even to me. She uh, would not even tell me ahead of time. So I could not put it into the slideshow. So, well, you know, so this morning I was at the warehouse signing books and um, Rhonda came up and she said, you know, I hope you're going to include that item that I told you about that y'all turned out to just absolutely love it on the farm. And friends, I am telling you, this is the best tool ever. Let me back up a little bit. So this, for those of you that are on YouTube are able to see this, this is a oh. official name is the Root Slayer. And oh. this is a shovel. It's a short handle, meaning it's not 60 inches long. It's probably 30 inches. And the head of this shovel is long and skinny. 
and it's serrated. And this, we use this for digging out tree saplings that have just really gotten a start. And you just push this long skinny thing down next to that. And I am telling you, Christine loved using this tool. So Rhonda is the one that told me about it. And the official name for it is the Root Slayer Deep Weeder. And we use, it just makes it you know, when you see one of those saplings, you think, oh gosh, next time I'll work on that. Not when yeah. you have a tool. I mean, it really makes it effortless. So that is a really, really great one. And we absolutely, any gardener, anybody has a home would appreciate that tool. We have so many saplings. I definitely need to get that. Oh my, that's so, right. They are so hard to pull out. You don't think they're going to be that hard, but they are yeah. so hard. They, um, because they self so. They have deep, long tap roots. Yeah. It just makes it so very, very, very hard. So those, those were some great gift ideas, Lane. They were. And I will put in the show notes links to all these, because like Lisa said, they're not all from the Gardener's Workshop, but I will try to put the links for everything into the show notes and let us know too in the comments on YouTube, let us know some gift ideas that you guys are thinking of. We want to know that. And also next week, on our podcast. We have a podcast every Thursday. Next week, we are going to be talking with Ellen Frost about putting together a little gift set for someone that is interested in floral arranging. So that is also another great gift idea. So join us next Thursday for that. that that'll be awesome. So friends, if you are enjoying Lisa and Lane on the Seed Talk, we would appreciate you to give us a subscribe if you're listening to us on YouTube. And we love comments. Lane loves to come in and answers your questions. So we appreciate that interaction. And if you're listening to it on your favorite podcast app, please give drop a review if you're enjoying this because that helps the podcast app to know that you like it. And so they'll show it to more people and we appreciate that. So friends, this has just been a great time today, Lane, kind of different, just kind of sharing the stuff we love and use, you know? Yes. It was really fun. And it was also fun to wear antlers because I don't get to do that very often. And I kind of had this little bell jingling in my ear every time I move. So yeah, I'm kind of in the spirit now. So now Thanksgiving under our belt, and then we move right into the holidays. So We wish you the very best to everyone. And until we meet again, thanks, Lane. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Make sure to give us a like, rating, review, comment. We really, really appreciate it. And we hope you guys are having a wonderful holiday season so far. All right, everybody. Ciao. Bye.